All right, everybody, welcome back. Good afternoon. We've got more linebackers to get through here. And again, we are getting closer to the bottom of the database's list of draftable linebackers, but that doesn't mean there isn't something special to find here potentially. So let's try to figure this out. And we're going to start with a uh, rare linebacker who actually did, I think, everything at the Combine. He might be the only one who did, actually. He's certainly the first one we've had so far. Tyrese Knight of UTEP, the UTEP Miners. Couldn't find his age. Six foot and half an inch, so a little bit short. 233 pounds, 32 and a half inch arms, nine and a quarter inch hands. Did a lot of stuff at the Combine, and most of it went fairly well. Uh, his 10-yard split in particular was really good, so he's got great acceleration. His speed overall was fine. 4.6340 is okay. Vertical and broad were passable. Three cone and 20 yard shuttle, not so much. So maybe that indicates poor change of direction. Bench press was whatever, 21. Not great, but fine. And uh, yeah, he, he actually ran the whole gamut. So props to him. CBS really likes him. They have him in the top 100. That That's not going to happen. ESPN has him in like the fifth. Database has him in the sixth. So I, I imagine he's going to go somewhere in that range. I don't think he's going to vault himself up with the combine performance that he had, which was... Overall, more the good than bad. But um, on top of that, he's got great production. I will say that, right? Like his 2023 season was filled with production. 140 tackles, more than 10 tackles a game, more than one tackle for loss a game, four and a half sacks, seven passes defensed, 83 PFF grade. And it was good in 2022 as well. 95 tackles, six and a half for loss, a sack, a pick, five passes defensed, making plays in coverage. Still good. So Tyrese Knight, he's productive. So yeah, that's the first thing that stands out when you look at Tyrese Knight. He's got remarkable college production, and he fuels that mostly by very aggressively attacking the backfield. He's always trying to knife into the backfield to go make a play on the ball carrier. I mean, you don't get to um, 22 tackles for loss over two seasons without constantly attacking the backfield. He's a good play reader as well. He understands what he's looking at, and he knows how to diagnose it, and he tries to put himself in a position to stop the play before it even starts because he can read it. He's good in zone coverage. He's a sound tackler, and he gets up to his top speed very quickly, which was indicated in his crazy good 10-yard split. Excuse me. So definitely good stuff here, here with the Tyrese Knight. Now, he doesn't get off blocks all that well. When he gets swallowed up by a blocker, he tends to kind of get washed out of the play. He's a mediocre athlete. His straight line speed is great, obviously, but his overall athleticism is just okay. His change of direction skills lack. I mean, that's kind of what I commented on with his three cone and 20 yard split. And his man coverage is not where you would like it to be. So there are some holes here and some of this stuff can't really be fixed. So there is a little bit of a ceiling here. There is a little bit of a cap on Tyrese Knight, but... Overall, I think that there's going to be some stuff he can do with the NFL level. Early down defender. He's really good attacking the run. I think he'd be really good on first and second downs. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that his aggressiveness in going after tackles for loss can be schemed against. And the right, um, the right offensive mind is going to be able to put him in bad positions a lot by tricking him. Because he triggers so fast... Sometimes you, he can fall for the eye candy a little bit. So fifth round feels about right to me. I would take him in the fifth and feel pretty okay about it. All right. Uh, Michael Barrett is the next guy here. Big school guy. National champion Michael Barrett. And I really liked his uh, partner in crime, Junior Colson, but did not quite feel the same way about Michael Barrett. 24 years old when the season starts. 5'11", so short. 233 pounds, 32 and an eighth inch arms, eight and a half inch hands, big boards. PFF likes him more than most other places. They have him in about the fifth. ESPN says sixth. CBS says seventh or UDFA. The database says seventh. Um, the stats over the last two years are not anything super stand out, but he's on a really good defense where the stats get spread around pretty wildly. So it's hard to be on a team like Michigan and have 130 tackles. There just aren't enough tackles to go around. So the production's pretty good. Eight and a half tackles for loss and six and a half sacks over the last two years. 
a couple picks, some forced fumbles, pretty good PFF grades. So <clears throat> there is some stuff here to hang your hat on. Did not do anything at the Combine, though. So we're working with a limited base of information here. What we can say about Michael Barrett is that he's a good sound tackler, doesn't miss a lot of tackles. I do think that his skill set lends itself very well to special teams. I think he'll be a good special teamer. He's proven himself capable of man coverage duties and the college level. Should be able to carry those over to the NFL. He's good in man coverage. He's a hard hitter as well on top of being a good tackler. So he's not the biggest guy, but he does hit with a good amount of force. And he covers a good amount of ground. He is a sideline to sideline defender. And all that stuff, I think, does make him draftable, but honestly, not by much, because there are certainly issues with Michael Barrett that I think are going to keep him from being much of an impact defender at the next level. And it all starts with, of course, him just being critically undersized. 5'11", that, that's really starting to test it. He's a little indecisive when he needs to trigger downhill, I feel like. Kind of a little bit like Colson, actually. Colson, I thought, was a little indecisive. Barrett's also, I think, indecisive, which is part of the reason why he's not involved in as many plays as he could be. He gets tunnel vision sometimes, I feel like, when he's chasing a play. Like, he doesn't see the big picture. He just kind of sees things very black and white. And he commits too hard on trying to stop the play. He doesn't have enough straight line speed either. He does cover a good amount of ground but he doesn't really have the speed to be able to keep up to the edges against the faster running backs in this league. So he's, I don't know, strikes me as a pretty limited player. I, I think the physical deficiencies hurt. I think the lack of quick trigger decision making is kind of a death knell because you need that to make up for the fact that you're not an athletic specimen. So maybe he could be like a coverage line, a coverage linebacker, like a dime linebacker or even a nickel linebacker. But I think it's more likely he ends up as a special teamer and that's about it. So I'd go seventh round. He's already 24, by the way, limited upside here. So I would just go seventh round here. I don't even know if he'll be able to be a cover linebacker because he's so short. Is he going to get mossed all the time? Maybe. So yeah, I'm not super enthusiastic about this one. There's obviously some good stuff here, and like I said, he will be good on special teams, I suspect, but I don't know if I see it working in the pros. So this is the Michigan linebacker I'm not so high on. Uh, one more guy in this video, we're going to do another bigger school guy. It's Steel Chambers of Ohio State, and I believe there are some uh, places that are higher on him than most. Like I think NFL.com actually likes this guy a lot. Um, for the most part, people have been kind of cold on this guy. I talked about him a little bit during the season, and it never really caught on. Couldn't find his age. Buckeye, 6'11". I'm sorry, 6'11 would be crazy. 6'1", 226 pounds, so little on the smaller side, especially weight-wise. He's pushing it. 30 and a half inch arms, so arm length is going to be a big issue. 9 and a quarter inch hands. Vertical jump was meh. Broad jump was bad, 9'4". 3-cone was eh, 7'13". 20-yard shuttle was 4.23, which is okay, I guess. That's pretty good. But combine overall was not very good for Steel Chambers. And the only big board that has him firmly draftable is PFF. CBS and the Mock Draft Database both have him barely, barely getting drafted in the seventh round. So there doesn't seem to be a lot of belief that he's going to be able to cut it in the NFL. And he'll be lucky to get drafted. I suspect he will because of the Ohio State pedigree, but not for that. He probably isn't even known. Pretty good production the last two years. He was far more productive as a playmaker in 2022, worth noting. Six and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, two picks. In 2023, tackle and a half for loss, one pick. So became a little bit more of a you know basic level player, I guess you could say. There's no sizzle with the stake. EFF grades have been okay for a couple years. So Steel Chambers, when you watch him play, great instincts on run defense. He's got linebacker instincts. That's probably the thing that's going to carry him through, if not his pedigree. He takes on blockers pretty well, despite his small size. He's pretty good at being able to hit with force and impact the blocker and not just let him get pushed out of the play completely. He's very effective in coverage, actually. He works through traffic with surprising effectiveness. He's able to knife through and uh, get to the ball carrier, despite working through a thicket of blockers at times. 
He's got good tackling fundamentals, and he triggers downfield down downfield fast. He's got good, quick decision making. So there's some stuff to like with Steel Chambers, but I <clears throat> I feel like he's undersized, which that's going to limit his abilities at the next level. And he's not a good enough athlete to make up for the fact that he is that small. So it's not like a there are linebackers out there who are 225 who I'm more in tune with because they're phenomenal athletes. But Steel Chambers is not a phenomenal athlete at all. Um, he sometimes bites hard on eye candy. Like, you can trick him with play action, you can trick him with misdirection, and he just bites hard on it, probably to make up for his limited physical athletic profile. But um, that leads to problems, and it will lead to problems at the pro level. And his short arms are probably going to make him not such a good tackler at the NFL level. He's a good tackler in college. In the pros, those short arms are going to create some problems here. So I think Chambers could work out as a part-time role in the NFL. But he's a physical player. He's a pretty physical player. I wonder how physical he's going to be able to be in the NFL. It's one thing at Ohio State, but it's going to be another thing on Sundays. So sixth round pick feels about right to me. I like him a little bit more than Barrett. I feel like his game is a little more well-rounded. It's a little more realistic that he'll be good. But yeah, either way, it's still a lot to ask, I think. So sixth round pick. Let me know what you guys thought about this crew. Let me know if anything here stood out to you. Got one more linebacker video, and then we're on to another position tomorrow. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Let me know down below how you're feeling about this crop.